The river and I have so much in common. Uh, some years ago, I suppose that for a variety of reasons, I tended to abuse my body a little bit and overindulged in this and that. And eventually, a few years ago, I had to go into have a triple bypass. And it seems to me that the parallel with the river is that we, as we grow and quote, in quotes, progress, we put so many demands on the river. We've polluted it, we've dammed it, we've busied it. And so we needed to do a triple bypass on the river. And as a result, we've cleaned it up. The, the pristine beauty of this lower uh, river is just amazing. A lot of these thoughts go through your mind as you're out here on a peaceful morning like this, just enjoying yourself. The Merrimack rises in wilderness as many great rivers do. High in the White Mountains, the rain falls and the snow melts. These waters collect in small ponds. The ponds overflow into brooks which grow into streams and then combine into a river. We call it the Pemajawasset here, an Indian name meaning long rapids. As the river rushes to the sea, millions of acres of watershed feed its flow and bring life and prosperity to those who drink from its waters. But for many years, the river was abused. Competing users were indifferent to the needs of others. And like Mac McGranahan, the fisherman, the river almost died. Fortunately, that time is passing. We're learning that we must balance the use of our water resources. We're learning that a river is a resource we can all share. Loon Mountain draws water from the river to make snow. The nearby town of Lincoln needs water for the tourists who come to ski. But some people question whether there is enough water in the river here near its source to support continued growth while leaving sufficient water for downstream users. Once, Lincoln was a mill town. The river provided power for manufacturing, and manufacturing created jobs. Papermaking, for example, thrived on the plentiful supply of wood and water, and is still important further downstream. At Merrimack Paper, Bill Provost manages the plant. All of paper mills in New England were built along major rivers because of the large quantities of processed water, and for some because they were using the water for hydroelectric generation. When their units are at full power, they use a little over 450 million gallons a day. And over a month's time, that would be equivalent to powering over 600 homes. And that is still not enough for our operations here. We still buy quite a bit of power from the utility company. In the area where we form the web of paper, there is more than 99% water in the slurry. At one time, it was actually less expensive to send the effluent to the treatment plant than try to recover every gallon we could. Now, it's such a high cost of dealing with the effluent that we've got to go back and reassess investments within the plant to reduce the volume of effluent. Personally, I feel that we all have an obligation to utilize the water resource, but not damage it. Merrimack Paper Company is very dependent on Merrimack River water. At the same time, if we can use the water, and then return it back to the river in the same condition as we brought it into the mill, and that's proper responsibility of using the resource. 20 years ago, industrial use so polluted the river that no one else could use the water. Fortunately, that's not the case anymore. We're learning to balance the needs of manufacturing with other equally important uses. 
such as wetlands. Much of New Hampshire's character comes from the close proximity of nature. Unfortunately, land development can seriously damage wetlands. So the needs of developers and industrial growth must be balanced with the need to preserve wetlands. Dave and Brenda Erler believe local people play an important role in wetlands protection. When the New Hampton Conservation Commission needed an inventory of wetlands, the Erlers took on the project. Wetlands are important in maintaining the quality of the water within the watershed uh, by, number one, uh, absorbing many of the excess nutrients that may come through a wetland, holding it up before it goes further down into a, another water body and into the, into the river system. Since many of our communities, especially our larger communities, get their water supplies directly from rivers, uh, that's an important aspect to consider. Other functional values of wetlands would include things like, well, uh, habitat for wildlife, a very key in ingredient um, in any ecosystem is having a suitable habitat. And roughly a third of our animals that we have that live in our, our part of the country either depend directly on wetlands uh, or frequent wetlands so often that without wetlands uh, their life would greatly be altered. Lucky. Really nice to see an otter, although I think if we check out some of the fringe areas, we should, if they're in the area, we should find sign of them too. Well, we did see those those white-tailed deer, the fawns, as we came around by Al Brook. All right. They're not well, really wetland species, but it was exciting to see them. Yeah, must they use, use the area. They use the uplands, but they also come down in the wetlands too. Um, often, people living in river valleys are concerned about floods, and wetlands are one of the key factors in preventing floods, acting like a big giant sponge, soaking up water as it flows off the land, uh, slowing it and releasing it very slowly, much as you'd squeeze a sponge and release that water. Wetlands nationwide have been under attack since European settlement. Uh, we've lost over 50% of the wetlands in the United States. Too often, they're looked at as just miserable places for muck and mosquitoes, and not places to, to really be valued. I grew up in a part of the country which is probably known best for their prairie pothole wetlands and grew up uh, hunting and trapping, fishing in wetland areas and came to associate a lot of, a lot of pleasant past experiences with wetlands. Uh, becoming older and, and hopefully wiser, uh, I recognize the attack that wetlands have been under and uh, feeling that Everybody can do something. Um, maybe, maybe my rationale is to try and protect at least some of the wetlands.